Hello, networking enthusiasts. Ever wonder how major websites like Netflix, Amazon, or Google manage to stay fast, reliable, and always available no matter where you are in the world? The secret lies in a powerful technology called Global Traffic Manager, or GTM. In this video, we'll explore what GTM is, how it works, and the real-world problems it solves. And to make it more exciting, we'll dive into a hands-on demo where we'll set up a GTM together and explore its key features. My name is Philip, and by the end of the video, you'll know how to make your own network as robust and efficient as the biggest tech giants. Let's dive in. To explain what GTM is, I will compare it to a load balancer as it performs a similar function. Traditional load balancer usually operates within a single data center, distributing traffic among group of servers. A GTM operates at a global level, directing traffic between multiple data centers or server locations across the globe. So the first difference between a regular load balancer and a GTM is scope. You use load balancers to distribute traffic within your data center and GTM to distribute traffic between data centers. Second thing is a load balancer works at a network or application layer. So basically it's managing actual HTTP or network traffic between clients and servers. GTM on the other hand works by manipulating DNS responses to direct users to different data centers or regions. So traffic passes through a load balancer but does not pass through a GTM. In short, Global Traffic Manager is a service that utilizes DNS to optimize how users are routed to servers or data centers. Why would you need a GTM? There are two main reasons. Uh, the primary reason is improved availability and disaster recovery. You can have a load balancer that directs the traffic to multiple servers in a data center, but what if the load balancer goes down? Or what if your internet connection goes down? You will say, I have redundant load balancers and multiple ISPs. Okay, that's fair. But if the whole region goes down, this won't help you. So the main reason for using a GTM is to ensure high availability and business continuity. If one data center or server fails, GTM can redirect the traffic to another location. How does GTM knows which endpoint is operational? It performs a health monitoring of the servers and does not direct the traffic to down or unresponsive servers. Second reason you may want a GTM is to reduce traffic latency. A GTM can direct the traffic to the nearest server, which reduces the time it takes for the data to reach the user, improving response times. Lastly, a GTM can balance traffic across multiple servers or data centers, preventing overloads and ensuring optimal server performance. Let's see how a GTM works from a high-level perspective. We have a bunch of client machines spread across the world. In our example, Dallas, Texas, Kraków, Poland, and Melbourne, Australia. Those client machines want to access our application. Application is hosted in various regions. Two VMs in the US, one on the West Coast and one uh, on the East Coast. Uh, two VMs in Europe, one in Western part and another one in the Central part. And a single VM in APAC. Each VM has its own DNS record in Linux Cloud Hacks of VH domain hosted on Cloudflare DNS. We have a GTM service that's basically a DNS based load balancer that hosts Linux Cloud Hacks trafficmanager.net domain. That's the domain our clients will use to access our application. Usually, you will create a CNAME for that domain, but for simplicity, we won't do it. In the GTM configuration, we put IPs or FQDNs of our application servers and define health checks. GTM will then constantly probe our servers if they are healthy. The idea is not to return DNS records if a backend server is down. Let's trace a request. When the client wants to connect to the application, first it will send a DNS query to the recursive DNS, in our case uh, Google, to resolve Linux Cloud Hacks Traffic Manager.net address. As Traffic Manager.net domain is managed by GTM, the recursive DNS will ask GTM to resolve it. Depending on the routing policy, the GTM will return the IP address or FQDN of one of the healthy backends. 
let's say it will return the closest one in terms of latency. Then the resolver needs to contact the authoritative name servers, in our case uh, Cloudflare, for Linux Cloud Hacks of VH domain to get the IP. Finally, this address is returned to the client. Only then the client can connect to the remote endpoint. Mind that the connection from the client to the application is direct. The traffic does not go via traffic manager. GTM only provides the IP or FQDN that the client should use. It does not pass traffic. Before we see GTM in action, let's set up our test environment. I've created a very simple Terraform script that will provision our servers and client VMs. I'm using Google Cloud as the cloud provider to demonstrate that GTM is cloud agnostic. You can use it with any backend, whether it's on-prem, cloud, or hybrid. Let's open the script. Here we define a map. First value is the name of the server, and the second value is its location. So for example, this VM will be created in US West 1 region, that's Oregon, and will be assigned DNS name VM US West Linux Cloud Hacks OVH. To cover the world, the script will create two servers VM in US, uh, two server VMs in Europe, and one server VM in Singapore, Asia. It will also create two client VMs, one in Australia and one in Dallas, Texas. At startup, each VM runs this script, which installs the Nginx web server and generates an index.html file. This file is served by default and contains details about region where the VM is located. Then we open the firewall to allow the traffic on port 80 TCP, that's HTTP, allow SSH traffic for management, and also allow ICMP traffic so we can ping the servers. Each VM will be allocated a public IP address, and this section will assign a DNS record with that IP. Lastly, we'll print the VM name and its public IP to the console. Okay, let's run Terraform to do its magic. Seven VMs in various parts of the world have been created. Each VM has a DNS record assigned from Linux Cloud Hacks domain. As the VMs are running Nginx server, we can query the application by the DNS name and it should return a reply saying where the VM is located. So for example, if I do CURL US West VM, it will tell me that the VM is located in US West. If I query a Europe Central VM, it will tell me the VM location is Central Europe and so on. Obviously, as the servers are scattered across the world, the latency from my home to every server is different. Let me test that. By looking at the results, I would prefer to talk to a server located in Central Europe unless the Central European server is down, then I would like to talk to the Western European server and so on. How to do that? You will say, use the first URL. The thing is, I want to use the same URL regardless of my location and connect to the nearest server automatically. Let's work on setting up the GTM to achieve that. We'll use Azure Traffic Manager as the GTM implementation. I've logged into the Azure portal. Let's go to the Traffic Manager under Load Balancing Services. I will click Create to provision a new Traffic Manager profile. Let's name it Linux Cloud Hacks. Then we need to select the GTM routing method. For now, I will pick the most basic one, routing based on priority. Then let's click create and go to the newly created profile. As you can see, a new DNS entry has been created. It consists of our profile name and the trafficmanager.net domain. However, if I query DNS for that record, we'll get a non-existent domain response as our GTM does not have any members yet, hence it cannot forward the traffic. Let's go to the configuration tab. Here we can select the routing method, set the TTL value for the DNS reply. Then we have all the values related to health checks. Here we define HealthCheck protocol. It can be HTTP, HTTPS, or TCP. The port our application is listening on, URI that will be queried, expected HTTP reply code, probing interval, that is how often to check endpoints health, number of consecutive failures before considering the endpoint unhealthy, and probe timeout, that is how long we should wait for a reply from the endpoint. Let's add our first bucket. I will go to the Endpoints tab and select Add. As our application is external to Azure, I will select the endpoint type as External. I will add the Europe West VM first. Put the VM's address in the FQDN section. 
set the priority to 1 and click Add. If we look at the endpoints monitor status, we see checking endpoints. It means that the health checks are still validating backend server. OK, now it's online. Let's check if our GTM is working. I will query the DNS for the GTM address. We got a reply. It points to the Europe West VM. Let's run a request. Works. We got a reply from the application. Let's go to the Endpoints tab and add a second endpoint. I will name it VM Europe Central and put the VM's address in the FQDN field. Mind that the priority is set to 2. Let me click Add. As before, the endpoint is being examined by health checks. It can take a few moments. And now it's showing online. OK, we have two endpoints, Europe West with priority 1 and Europe Central with priority 2. If we run some requests, our GTM will always direct the traffic to the endpoint with highest priority, that is the endpoint with the lowest number. As expected, Europe West was selected as it has priority 1. Of course, it will pick the endpoint with highest priority, assuming the endpoint is healthy. Let's log into our primary node, that's Europe West. If we look at our web server log, we'll see constant traffic coming from GTM health checks. Let's stop our application. Now, let's go to the endpoint tab. It still shows EU West endpoint as healthy. We need to wait a bit. As in the configuration, we've said that we need three probes to fail, and probe is sent every 30 seconds, so that's 90 seconds in total. OK, our priority one endpoint, that is Europe West, is showing as degraded. This means that the server is either down or the service is replying with HTTP code other than 200. If we run the traffic now, we'll see that the GTM is directing it to a second location. Let me log into our primary VM one more time and start our service. OK, our service on Europe West server is healthy again. If I run the traffic now, it will point back to the main node. When to use priority-based routing? Mainly for disaster recovery setups. The traffic will always go to the endpoint with the highest priority and fall back to lower priority endpoint during outages. Once the primary endpoint becomes available, the traffic will switch back to that primary endpoint. Another routing type is weighted round robin. In this approach, you assign every endpoint a number called the weight, and GTM will distribute the traffic proportionally across endpoints based on pre-assigned weights. For example, if the first endpoint has weight 6 and the second endpoint has weight 4, then 60% of the traffic will be directed to the first endpoint and 40% of the traffic will be directed to the second endpoint. This type of setup is mostly used for A-B testing or load distribution. I won't be demonstrating this setup as configuration is almost identical to the priority-based routing. Let's move to the most interesting and most commonly used routing type, that is performance routing. I will set it up first and then show you how it works. Let's go to the endpoints tab and remove both of the endpoints. Now let's go to the configuration and change the routing method to performance. Let's go back and add our endpoints. First, I will add the US West endpoint. Mind that apart from the name and the fully qualified domain name, we also need to provide the location of our server. I will select West US and click Add. Next, let's add the US East endpoint. Let's provide the domain name and select East US as the location. Then let's move to Europe. I will add the Europe West endpoint, provide the FQDN and select West Europe as the location. Another VM is the Europe Central. Let me provide the domain name and select Poland Central as the region. Last endpoint is Asia. Let me provide the domain name and select Southeast Asia as the location. Let's wait a bit so all endpoints will be showing us healthy. OK, now the magic. I will go to my home PC that's in Europe and try reaching the service. I got a reply from Europe Central VM. If we check the latency to that VM, it's 14 milliseconds. It's the closest VM in terms of latency out of all of our VMs. Let's log into that VM and shut down the application. Let's wait a bit for the endpoint to become degraded. There it is. Now let's run the test one more time. OK, we got directed to the second best endpoint, that is Europe West. If we check the latency, it is 30 milliseconds away. 
let me log into VM in Texas and attempt to connect to our service. Do you see that? We got directed to US East server. Now let's log into a VM in Australia. I will try connecting to our service and we got directed to Asia server. You'll ask, how is that possible? As far as directing the traffic to healthy backends, that's easy. You've already seen how Traffic Manager probes the servers. If a server goes down or the endpoint is disabled, it simply won't return its address. But how does it know to route the traffic to the location that's closest to you? Let me explain. First thing is, Traffic Manager acts as an intelligent DNS resolver. It maintains a latency table. A key in that table is the source IP range which DNS request came from, and the values represent latencies to each Azure data center. So, for example, if the DNS requests came from this IP range that belongs to my ISP, then latency to each European Azure data center looks like this. If we look at latency to US Azure data centers, we'll see latency is much higher. So you suspect how it works. When a DNS request comes in, the traffic manager looks up the source IP address of that request in the latency table and then chooses an available endpoint in Azure data center that has the lowest latency for that IP address range. Of course, the endpoint can be external, not in the Azure data center. That's the reason we did put the location upon endpoint creation. This latency table is updated regularly as internet conditions change. But wait, we are not querying the GTM directly from the client, so how does it know our source IP? The answer is, it does not know our IP. GTM only knows the IP of the DNS resolver that made the request on our behalf. In our case, the Google DNS. Here we come to the second thing that's used to make the solution operational, Anycast routing. I won't be getting into much detail about Anycast routing as it deserves a video of its own, but in great simplification, you advertise the same IP address into BGP from various locations across the world. Routers advertise the same IP address through BGP to its neighbor routers. Those neighbor routers forward the route information to other routers until it propagates across the network. When a user sends a request to Anycast IP, their ISP router chooses the best path to that IP based on BGP routing policies, usually the shortest AS path. If I trace the route to Google DNS from New York, it will show me it's one millisecond away. If I trace the route to Google DNS from Sydney, it will also show me it's one millisecond away. Obviously, it's not the same Google DNS server, although it has the same IP. So, when you query your DNS for a GTM address, the request will be directed to the closest Google DNS server due to any cat routing. Then, Google DNS will contact Azure Traffic Manager that in turn will check its latency table and return the endpoint that's closest to the source. You may ask, I'm connecting to Google DNS with 8888 IP. How does GTM know where this IP is located? Quad 8 is just an Anycast IP. In fact, Google is making the request to the Azure Traffic Manager from a different uh, local IP. Here's the real IP that Azure Traffic Manager sees. It's located in Poland. There are two quick things I'd like to show you. First of all, you can create a CNAME so your clients don't have to use trafficmanager.net domain but an alias. I've created such CNAME. Let's see how it resolves. First, gtm.linuxcloudhacks.ovh resolves to linuxcloudhacks-traffic-manager.net. Then it resolves to a specific server. Finally, you get the IP. Second thing is the TTL value of the DNS reply. This specify how long a DNS record can be cached by a resolver such as your local DNS server before it needs to request the information again from the authoritative DNS server. A TTL value is needed so clients don't ask DNS every time. However, in the case of GTM, the larger the TTL value, the more time it takes for the client to perform a switch to a different IP. So, we did set it up to a low value as the underlying IP may change. Of course, that will generate more DNS queries, putting more load on the DNS infrastructure. That's it for today. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more networking tutorials. If you have any questions or need more help, uh, drop a comment below and I will be happy to assist. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.